<laughs> well, praise the Lord. It is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning, precious Savior. And I, I feel his presence, and I know that he's going to be with us today. I can tell you about this, ses- this teaching this morning, this session, and it's up to God, you know, what it is or how that it comes out at this point. But for several days, there's been a scripture on my heart. And uh, I, I believe it's probably a remnant from last Sunday morning service. But uh, there's a, one verse of Scripture in First John, the fifth chapter. And actually, it's the uh, uh, 19th verse. And it says, We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies in wickedness. And I couldn't get that scripture out of my mind, out of my thinking, out of my heart, and I knew absolutely nothing to do with it. I knew, didn't know where to go or what to do. We came to prayer meeting last night, and, and I prayed throughout the prayer meeting, begging God for a message, for understanding, for uh, uh, some word from heaven as to what I was to minister, and nothing, received absolutely nothing. I went to bed about 11.30 last night and and had, had read the scriptures for a good while, and but nothing. I woke up at 4 o'clock this morning so drowsy that I couldn't hardly open my eyes. And I lay there a minute, and I knew that if I'd get up, and go into uh, the living room and open my Bible that the Lord would give me something. And I was so drowsy, I couldn't hardly make myself to do it. But I realized that if I didn't, that I'd stand here alone this morning. And I'm telling you, if you've been preaching any t- length of time, uh, such a thing as that will get you out of bed. Praise the Lord. I mean... But I, I can only open this as so much, it suddenly became so big that I needed to study it for a week or a month, you know, before getting into it. But it really, it really comes down to uh, what we were ministering last, was it Sunday, was it maybe it was Wednesday night in the service, uh, but the, the service were that that uh, was ministering about how that uh, s- iniquity was found in uh, uh, in uh, the anointed cherub and how that he it, you know his iniquity was that he would exalt himself above the stars of God he'd become like God he would uh, be God in the house of God and and all of that I. I think it was probably Wednesday night, but I'm not for sure at this point. But uh, uh, I, I, I saw, and I saw something that actually, actually scared me during that service. Something I've been aware of for a long time, but uh, but just this fact that the entire world is Satan's kingdom, that he's the god of this world. And every person born into this world is born into Satan's kingdom. And it, it's, it's called the power of darkness. Uh, over in Colossians, the first chapter, uh, that it's where that, that Paul, Paul spoke this in the 12th verse. He said, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet or enabled us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Notice he spoke of, of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. And so the entire world lies in darkness. Uh, Isaiah, Isaiah, the 60th chapter, and uh, uh, it's 
I've preached on it so many times over the years, but, but the scripture says, Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And this has got to be a prophecy of, of Christ coming into the world, a light a light of the world into a, a world of darkness, spiritual darkness, I'm talking, absolute darkness, gross darkness. Darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness shall cover the people, but, but the Lord shall arise upon thee. His glory shall be seen upon thee. And th this is a prophecy, the previous chapter, the 59th chapter, of uh, what was talking about the darkness that they, how that they they walked in darkness, and uh, at ninth verse of Isaiah fifty nine, judgment is far from us; neither does justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity for brightness. But we walk in darkness, and that's the fifty ninth chapter of Isaiah. But but then the the sixtieth begins with that prophecy of light coming, the coming of light. Uh, and, and so the whole world, as John said in 1 John uh, 5 and 19, we know that we are of God. Now John is, is almost 100 years old when he writes this. And it's almost at the end of that first century. And uh, it may be a little less than a hundred, but it's almost at the end of that first century. All other apostles have been suffered the martyr's death above twenty years before this time, and and John, the apostle John, has continued, you know, uh, and finally they believe died a natural death after having been tortured and trying to martyr him a couple of times, but uh, but nevertheless. He, he writes this, this, this uh, uh, epistle of 1 John actually to, to divide the light from the darkness, the, the, the truth from the lie, the children of God from the children of the wicked one, to give a, a means of understanding. And throughout this, he says repeatedly, by this we know. And he would explain how that you can know the difference between the light, the darkness, the good, the evil, the children of God, the children of the wicked one, and so on. But he'd give these ways, all these different tests, and all these different ways that you can know uh, the truth from the lie, and etc. But he concludes this in the very last words of this chapter. He says, we, he says, we know that whosoever is born of God, that's, 1 John 5, 18. Sinneth not. Whosoever is born of God, sinneth not. He said, this much we know. We know that whosoever is born of God, sinneth not. That erases every shadow of a doubt concerning whether a child of God is a sinner or not. We know, he said, we know that whosoever is born of God, sinneth not. I mean, this man, this man walked with Jesus for three years, three and a half years, and was witness to his crucifixion and his resurrection, and then filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. And now then, uh, 65 years later, he's bringing this once more. He said, we know nothing has ever changed his, his mind about this, uh, his understanding is even firmer today than it was in the beginning. John, the apostle John, it seems to be, was a late bloomer. He never wrote a letter in the lifetime of all the other apostles. They were writing their, their uh, gospels and epistles and so on, but he never wrote a letter and after they were dead and gone until after Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed. And then he wrote his Gospel of John and then 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John 
He wrote these, so I say he's kind of a late bloomer. But he has the responsibility of being the only eyewitness apostle remaining. And he writes this, this epistle to, for all time so that we could know the difference between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness, between Christ and the devil and between the children of God, the children of the devil, etc. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God. Now this language, this language, he said we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. When he said we know that we are of God, that means we know that we are born of God. See, he's, he's only... Uh, uh, strengthening or carrying on the thought from the verse before whosoever is born of God sinneth not we know that and we know that we are of God we are born of God we know that we are born of God praise God and the whole world lies in wickedness well he, that word wickedness there connects with that wicked one in the previous verse, and that wicked one, those that are born of God, sinneth not, and for he that is born of God keepeth himself, that wicked one touches him not. But here he said the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world is the kingdom of that wicked one. The whole world is in darkness. And, uh, uh, and, and, my, uh, and then the church... The church, uh, from, from the, the end of John's life especially, it descended. It had a great falling away into over a thousand years. I judge almost 1,200 years called the Dark Ages. But remember this, the whole world was in darkness. The whole world was in darkness. And there's regions of the world that had never been touched by the light. We have no record of, of China and Japan and much of that northern kingdoms and such ever being touched by the light. But the only light there was was the light of Christ and his people, his children. When Jesus began uh, dealing with, uh, with his disciples, he told them, he said, I am the light to the world. But later he told them, said, you, I believe this is in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, you are the light of the world. If, if they were not the light of the world, there was no light in the world. Praise God. And so when, when the church descended into that thousand, over a thousand years of dark ages, it was that the church was darkened. There was no light in the world because the church was darkened and the light was very, very dim. But there were those few, even through, through the thousands of years, a thousand years of dark ages, that were living in hiding, you know, from the beast that was on the throne of the church, you know, for over, over a thousand years. But there were those, and they very often paid with their life, burned with their, at the stake, their heads cut off and tortured in so many, so many different ways by that which called itself the church. And that's the reason it was the dark ages, because the light was almost gone out. But there's one thing that you can know, one thing that you can know, praise God, God will always do something before the light is totally extinguished. That reminds me of the times of, of Eli. Eli and, and the child Samuel. You know, child Samuel was, uh, was, was the son of a, a barren woman that had promised God, you give me a son and I'll give him back to you to serve you all the days of his life. And God gave her a son, Hannah, Hannah the barren woman. And, uh, but he, he, she brought him to the temple and old Eli was getting old and about blind and, 
And his sons, which were priests, were sons of Belial, children of Belial. They were, they were evil. They were adulterers, fornicators. They were thieves. But they were the priests appointed to carry the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders, which were, had to be holy shoulders, you know, of holy men of God. But these were evil men. And, and the scripture speaks of just before the light went out in the temple that God spoke to that child. He spoke to that child, praise God. And, uh, and, and, and little Samuel, the word of the Lord came to him and he became a, a prophet and, and, a, and a priest and a very, well, still a child. The scripture said none of his words dropped to the ground because everything that he spoke, it came to pass. Praise God. And the light did not go out. That's the way it was during the dark ages. The light grew dimmer and dimmer. But before the light was totally extinguished, came that light of the Reformation. Praise God. The preaching of the gospel such as was revealed to Martin Luther and other men of that time. And they preached what they understood. And it, uh, it consumed that kingdom of darkness. Oh my, gave a deadly wound to that, uh, to that beast that was in control of the church at that time. Well, praise God. And so God, God has a light, but it, there's no light in this world apart from Christ and his people. And that, that we must understand. I want to come back over to the first chapter of, of John, and, uh, and, and we're going to read first, first John, the first chapter, rather. And uh, he said this, he said, fifth verse, this then is a message which we've heard of him, heard from Christ, and declare unto you that God is light, in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Now, notice this. There are those that claim to have fellowship with God, but their walk is in darkness. Now, uh, there's, a, there's darkness. There's a darkness that the whole world is in darkness, but... but the uh, Jesus told that his, his, the Jews and actually his own disciples, he said, take heed that the light, lest the light that is in thee be darkness. If the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? And he's saying that the darkness uh, in those that profess to be the children of God that are walking in darkness is greater than the darkness that the whole world is under. I mean, you know, there's lots of good people, but they're in a kingdom of darkness. There's innocent people, but they're no less in a kingdom of darkness. And they must be delivered from that kingdom of darkness, just like he spoke over there in, in Colossians, the first chapter, and translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. Praise God. I read that verse the other night and, and I remembered Enoch. He walked with God and was not because God took him. He was translated. Well, I've been translated and you've been translated. Praise God. I thought Enoch had something on us, but we've been translated. Hallelujah. Oh, just as surely as Enoch was translated from earth to heaven, we've been translated from the power of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son, from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. We've been translated. Hallelujah. But he said here, but if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, 
Now, one of these is what people say, and the other is what they do. Well, they say they have fellowship, but they walk in darkness. But the other walks, doesn't claim anything. He just walks in the light. If we walk in the light, praise God, then have we fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I can tell you that the light that we walk in is the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to go over, if I can find it real quickly, go over to 2 Corinthians and the, the, the fourth chapter. And the scripture says this in a third verse. If our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world, that's Satan, that's Lucifer, is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So not only are those that are lost in the darkness, in the kingdom of darkness, the power of darkness, but they're also blinded lest the light should shine to them, lest the light should pierce the darkness and shine to them. The God of this world hath blinded their minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine in them. But we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. My, my, my. Let's go back to Genesis, the first chapter, right in the middle of this one, verse. We'll be back. We'll be back. But in Genesis, the first chapter, I want you to see something here. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth without, was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now this is natural darkness. This is natural darkness. I mean, there's no sun, there's no moon, there's no stars to lighten the earth at, at, at this point. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. This is what Paul referred to. God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. Praise God. He's referring to the creation. When, the, when darkness was upon the face of the deep and the whole earth lay in darkness. But it was natural darkness. But God said, let there be light. And there was light. Oh man, God saw the light that it was good and he divided the light from the darkness. Praise God. Now that was all the natural darkness and the natural light. But here he says, back to Second Corinthians, the sixth, fourth chapter, the sixth verse, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, six. 4,000 years before Paul wrote this, or, or whenever it was, maybe, maybe a million years before. I don't know, whenever God created the heavens and the earth. Lots of movement today said it was only 6,000 years ago. I don't care if it was a trillion years ago. Whatever it was, God did it. Praise God. Is that all right? Whatever it was, God did it. Praise God. But God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We have this treasure, this light to the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Praise God. But exactly like God commanded light to shine out of darkness back in the beginning of creation, 
Praise God. He's commanded light to shine into our hearts. To shine into our hearts. We have this light in earthen vessels, but we give it. We give it to the world. They give this light to the world. Praise God, precious Savior, because we're set here as the saints in light, the children of light. We're set here to give the light to those that sit in darkness. When Jesus came and began his ministry in Capernaum, they said it was fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, that those that sat in darkness saw a great light. Praise God. And I know that Capernaum was the region that was called the, 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 the valley of the shadow of death where men sit in darkness. But the whole world was in darkness. The whole world was in darkness. But when Jesus, when Jesus, full of the Holy Ghost, stood up and began to minister, those that sat in darkness saw a great light. Praise God, that's that same light that, that He shined in our hearts that, to give to those that sit in darkness, that they would see today a great light. Praise God. And so, back over here to 1 John and the first chapter again, He said, He said, if we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, you're still in darkness. You don't have fellowship with God if you're still in darkness. You know, the darkness of religion is the greatest darkness there is. Pray, listen to me. Listen to me. And, and Paul's going to show that a big part of those that profess to be the children of God, even in the church, are yet in darkness. They're yet in darkness. He's going to show this. Or I said, Paul, John, that's all right. I was listening through my service from the other night and discovered that Adam built the ark. Maybe some of y'all caught that, but it wasn't very pleasant when I caught it. <laughs> well, first year of ministry, I hope this isn't my last year of ministry, the first year I had uh, Abraham build the ark once at Way back in 1964, and now in 2021, we find out that Adam built the ark. <laughs> oh my, so, well, praise God, you can laugh with me, because you can't laugh at me. You're going to have to laugh with me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But, uh, uh, praise the Lord. Uh, but, but he said, he said, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light. And, and I, I believe that is as he is the light, because God is light. And if we walk in the light, <clears throat> that God is the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son. You know, this one with another is talking about fellowship with the Father. Praise God. It's talking about, in the third verse, John said, that which we've seen and heard declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And so if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with the Father and the Son, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And he continues on these scriptures that people stumble over trying to prove that's, that, uh, that a child of God is still a sinner. But if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth's not in us. You know, every verse in here that says, if we say, three times, if we say, and in the second chapter, three times, he that saith. And every time it's talking about those that walk in darkness and claim to have fellowship with God. They claim to have fellowship with God, but they walk in darkness. If they say, if they say that they have no sin, they deceive themselves, the truth's not in them. If they say they have not sinned, 
that we may, they make him a liar and the truth is not in them. Paul used the word we as a hypothetical situation. Hypothetical. I could say why. If we climb Mount Everest, that's never going to happen. You might, but not this we. This we's never going to climb Mount Everest. But I could say, if we climb Mount Everest, we could see for, for hundreds of miles from the top if we climb, but it's not going to happen. It's a hypothetical situation. And you can include yourself in a hypothetical situation and doesn't mean you have any part of it whatsoever because it's a hypothetical. And if I walk in darkness and say I have no sin, I'm a liar. If I walk in darkness and say I have not sinned, I'm a liar. But if I walk in the light, praise God, I have fellowship with the Father and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. Hallelujah. Precious Savior. Well, hallelujah. But he, he goes on dealing with this matter of light and darkness. And, and people, people walk in darkness. I tell you, if you're believing another gospel, you're walking in darkness. You know, I, I, this dark matter of darkness is so broad, you know, that the whole world is under the power of darkness. Uh, you know, and no light in it. I mean, spiritually we're talking about, except for Christ and his children. Praise God. And, uh, and so, you know, it talks about walking in darkness. And so we talk about the darkness of the law of Moses. Yeah, that's darkness. We talked about the darkness of Gnosticism. Yeah, that's darkness. We talked about the dark darkness of Nicolaitans. Yeah, that's darkness. But everything that's not light is darkness. Is that right? Everything that's not light is darkness. And, and the religious world was in darkness. Judaism was in darkness. And, and there were a few that believed God. There were a few in, in the generation of Christ like the parents of, of uh, John the Baptist, Elizabeth, Zacharias, were both righteous with all the righteousness that could be afforded them under that dispensation. They believed God. They trusted God. They believed the prophecies of Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. They were chosen of God to bring forth the forerunner of Christ and so on. And all the way from Abel, who offered more excellent sacrifice. He did it by faith because he believed God. He believed when God told him what to bring. Praise God. He believed God and received witness that he was righteous. And men, women throughout the ages that believed God, God became their light. But they were not the light. John the Baptist, you know, before Christ died, uh, well, let's go over to St. John a second. First chapter of St. John. We know it by heart. The first words in the beginning is the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same as in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him is not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from John, God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light. John was not that light. Praise God. John was not the light of the world. He was not that light. But, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh in the world. He was in the world. The world was made by him. The world knew him not. He came in his own. His own received him not. But to as many as received him. Let's talk about Jesus Christ. To him gave he the power to become the sons of God. 
even to them which believe on his name. Going over to uh, John the third chapter. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles which thou dost except God be with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Praise God. Now, Nicodemus saith, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Got to be born twice. He that is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said to thee, who was thee? It was Nicodemus. What was Nicodemus? He's a ruler of the Jews. He was a, a, a teacher of the law. Very religious man. He's on the Sanhedrin court. And Jesus said, I say to thee, you must be born again. He said it to Nicodemus. You must be born again. Nicodemus was not that light. Nicodemus was not in that light. But Jesus, Nicodemus came to that light. Hallelujah. Precious Savior. And Oh my, let's read on down a, a little bit, a little bit further. He said, 19th verse, this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. But light came into a world that was full of darkness. Darkness covered the earth and gross darkness covered the people. And light, light came into the world. And men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Do you know who it was talking about here? Up in Capernaum, <laughs> where it was said that those that sat in darkness have seen a great light. This was one of the most wicked areas of, of Israel. Wicked. Where, where the, the thieves were. Where the, the, the gangs were. This was, what was you know, the, the most wicked among the wicked areas of Israel. Unsafe to travel. But there, there, those that sat in darkness saw a great light. But here, where it said that men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. It's talking about the scribes and the Pharisees. It's talking about the religious leaders of Israel of that day. They loved the darkness. Their darkness was the law of Moses. Their darkness was the traditions of religion. Their darkness was, was loving to, to uh, even to, to slay a lamb and, and sprinkle its blood. Their darkness was, oh my, so many things that they thought they were blessed with that actually the Apostle Paul said they were cursed with it. You know, he that's of the law is under a curse. Under the curse, uh, the Apostle Paul said. But these were living under a curse and ministering a curse and loved it. They were ministering darkness and they loved it. They loved the darkness because their deeds were evil. It means their works were worthless. Their religious works were worthless. And I can tell you that millions of people today in churches are, are trusting in works, in ordinances of man that can do nothing, absolutely nothing. The 13th chapter of Hebrews said it's a good thing 
that the heart be established with grace and not with, with meats that have not profited those that have been occupied therein. Talk about doctrines of men. You know, doctrines you can believe, things you can do, be no better for it. You know, never be changed by it. I grew up in churches and some people don't understand my take on this today. But if you didn't take communion every first Sunday, you was on your way to hell. I mean, I've seen many times somebody let the communion pass them by. When they was passing it, they, they let it pass by and not take it. And I'm telling you, quick as that communion service is over, two or three of the elders be over there. Why, brother? Why? What sin is your life? What have you done? You know, why? Why? You, you know, and, and because they just knew this backslidden. If they didn't drink that little bit of grape, Welch's grape juice. I don't know what Welch has that's so spiritually great for us, but uh, uh, Welch's grape juice and, and uh, now the charismatic, they wanted the real stuff, you know, <laughs> the stuff you could get high on. And I think they take communion with about a bottle full. No, I'm, I don't know that. Uh, but, uh, but nevertheless, I mean, things that we can abide in that we think See, people think they receive grace by, by taking what's called the sacraments. They receive grace. You don't receive nothing through that except a little bit of wafer and my, ours was, was uh, unsalted saltines it is what ours was. We'd crumble them up ourselves. I knew it wasn't the body of Jesus because sometimes as a young man, I'd be the one breaking them up in that dish and pouring out that Welch's. You know, and uh, uh, but you know, I mean, so many things. Ask somebody, are you saved? Oh, yes, I was baptized when I was 12 years old. I didn't ask you that. I preached a, a, a meeting, I preached, uh, taught a Sunday school class, and then preached the morning service at a dear friend's church up in Missouri. I won't go no further than that as to where it was, but after Sunday school. There was a man that was in total despair after the Sunday school service. And he, he waited till everybody's gone. He came up and he said, he said, uh, I, I totally disagree with your, your uh, supposition or whatever he called it, you know. I said, well, what do you mean? Well, you said that, that the children of God are not sinners. I know for a fact that they're sinners. I said, well, how do you know that? He said, well, I got saved when I was 12 years old, but I never served God till I was 32 years old. He said, I, I, I lived in sin for 20 years after I was saved. I said, what makes you think you were saved when you was 12 years old? You know, you got to find out what salvation is. You know, you just can't say, well, I was saved when I was 12 years old. Well, I was baptized when I was 12 years old. That baptism didn't do nothing for you. I said, it didn't do nothing for you. At the very best, uh, baptism is only a, a, a public testimony. And so if it's a public testimony, how come you're doing it behind the pulpit in the wall? You're hidden in a wall someplace. If it's a public testimony, I mean, get sensible. Get, at least when I did baptize, I baptized every one of them down in the San Jacinto River. That old muddy, muddy river with sewer running into it upstream. You know, <laughs> we'd be out there when it's 30 degrees. Got to get them baptized. Got to get them baptized. Get, get out of that altar. We'd haul them down to that river. It'd be 30 degrees. And they'd come up, their teeth shattered so much we thought they received the Holy Ghost. Oh, my. <laughs> Praise God. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just telling you how it was. And it is funny. It is comical. Because those things do absolutely nothing for a person. They are darkness to those that trust in them. Listen to me. But, oh my. <laughs> he said, the condemnation is that light is coming to the world. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil as the deeds of the law. Paul said, therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh 
shall be justified. Nobody could be saved by the deeds that they were performing and the ordinances they were, were doing. Nobody could be saved or justified by those things. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, hateth the light that his deeds may be manifest. But no, 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 lest his light deeds should be reproved. But he that doth truth cometh to the light, <laughs> that his deeds might be made manifest, that they're wrought in God. I believe it was in 1987 I had that vision. I've only got five minutes. I, I had that vision of making a journey through the valley of the shadow of death where men sit in darkness. And I was in this little one-man vehicle. I've had, I had several visions of being in that one-man vehicle, going wherever I wanted to go safely. Said people said, how can you do it? I said, because in him, that little vehicle was Christ. In him, we live and we move and we have our being. But this vision, I was told, said, you're going to make a journey through the valley of the shadow of death where men sit in darkness. And I got in my little vehicle and we wound around a road going down, down, deep into the earth. Came into a broad valley. It was darkness. Oh, it was total darkness. Driving through the long road through that valley. is a darkness you could see through. The Bible even talks about a darkness that can be seen through, but you, you could see through it. And uh, I could see a plantation. I could see the taskmasters with their whips driving the slaves. I could see the slaves gathering the fruit of the, tran of the plantation and carrying them in great bundles on their backs and shoulders and on their heads and so on. And it was a horrible, horrible place, cruel taskmasters. I'm driving along looking at this and suddenly a bright light turned on on the front of my little vehicle. And, uh, and it was a searchlight, and it began to sweep back and forth through that valley. And when that light turned on, it would start sweeping this way, and the taskmasters would leap for cover. They'd run to get behind anything, trying to keep that light from, from coming on them. They hated that light, but I watched the slaves begin to drop their burdens they begin to walk toward that light. Oh my, I saw that in 1987. And I, I didn't understand it, but I, I do understand today that praise God, there came a day that God turned the light to the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ on in our ministry and in this church and in many others that are preaching that glorious light today, precious Savior. And and it does the same thing. When I first saw it, I preached revival in a church about 75 miles from here. And I didn't know it, but that pastor had just done a series on, on, on good works and, and how that they were justified by the things that we do, their good works. And, and I was preaching for this very, very chapter. I mean, this very text, you know, that lights come into the world, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. And I was explaining it as their religious deeds. Man, that preacher got mad at me. Ooh, he got upset at me. I'm telling you, I come into his church and destroying everything he'd been building up, and I didn't know nothing about it. But it needed destroyed. It needed to be destroyed. He'd always been a friend before that time, but didn't see much of him after that time. But... Uh, Nevertheless, you know, it, it just, religion, religion without Christ is darkness. It's darkness, but Christ is the light. Christ is the light. And, uh, oh my, I can tell you one more dream I had, and I, I hate to tell these things, because back in the mid-70s, I was backslidden for a time. I was backslidden. And this was... Before I was restored, I, I know the very date that God restored me. And he said, the indignation is past. I will restore. And, uh, but God's indignant at sin among his people. Indignant. God's indignity is against sin 
in his people. And I wasn't in the bondage of the sin that destroyed me at the time, but I wasn't restored. And I had a, I had a dream that I was going down to the judge's house one night. I don't know why. But I, I thought, and it was a little before 10 o'clock at night, and I thought, well, I'm going to go present my case before the judge. And so I come up to the judge's house, and uh, it turned out he had his court in the house. And uh, I opened the gate, and I got through the gate on his property, and suddenly all the lights went out in the house. And uh, I'm terrified. Now then, I mean, here I am. I'm inside his property, inside a fence and a gate, and all the lights are out. I wanted to run. I wanted to, and suddenly a bright light turned on just outside of the house. And I heard a voice said, You that stand in darkness, step forth into the light. And I mean, that was a commanding, authoritative voice. And I walked over and stood in the light. I guess where he could see me, you know, but I stood in the light. And he brought me inside to his judgment seat. And I'm standing there trembling, afraid, terrified. I'm going to be a judge as a thief that was caught on his premises after the lights were out. And I'm scared, I'm trembling. I'm going to be judged as a thief. There's plenty to judge me for at that time. But my fear of being judged as a thief and the judge looked at me, just looked at me a little bit. And he reached down under his uh, desk and he pulled up an old guitar. Now, I've never played a guitar in my life. I never owned a guitar in my life. I started learning with Brother Jerry Green 40 years ago, and now he's a great guitarist, and I can't play the first note. When my fingers got sore, I quit. I was a quitter when it came to that guitar. But the judge held up that guitar, and it was dirty and dull and scratched and broken strings. It was a mess. He said, do you recognize this? And I said, yes, sir. He said, who does it belong to? He, I said, it, it's mine. It's mine. Where did you get it? I said, it was a gift. It was a gift. He reached that out over that desk. He said, you take this gift and you clean it up and you tune it up and you restring it and you get it and don't ever let me catch you with this gift in this condition again. And the vision was over. And I knew that that gift was my salvation, but not only my salvation, but the ministry that he'd called me to. And it was all broken up and dirty, dusty, broken strings, everything. Praise God. But one thing about it, when I stepped over to the light, he said, he, you know, come to the light, come to the light. When you come to the light, when you come to the light, he's not going to destroy you. When you come to the light, he's not going to destroy you. You run from the light, you hide from the light, and it will destroy you. But light has come into the world, praise God, to save the world. Christ came not in the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's rescued. Rescued. Because we were born sinners. We were born in the darkness. We were born the, the children of darkness. Listen to me. We were born with Lucifer 
as our God, as our King, the Prince of this world, the God of this world. But Christ came, praise God, to deliver us out of it, to deliver us, to rescue us out of it. Praise the Lord. And I see people, <laughs> can I, you know, <laughs> just in natural things, and I, I shouldn't even bring this up, but when I see these radical that are trying to take over the nation and bring it into socialism and, and increase uh, perversion and gay marriage and transvestites and, and uh, abortion and all that stuff, they look like the most miserable people I've ever seen in my life. I mean, they're unhappy. And it's our fault they're unhappy. I mean, they think it's our fault they're unhappy, but they're miserable. They're miserable. They look out and they, they see other people that's happy and going about life and having a good life, and they hate them for it. They absolutely hate them for it. And, uh, but, but a child of God, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And those that hate the light will hate you. They will hate you, but don't you fear them. Don't you do it. Praise God, because, uh, uh, you know, Paul said that God gave him, and I believe it was Barnabas, but other apostles, to be for salvation to the ends of the earth. To be for salvation. Christ came. And he died on the cross. And he reconciled the world unto himself. But the world is unreconciled. The world is unreconciled. Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, says God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the ministry of reconciliation. He's done all for the salvation of every soul on this planet. Rejecting none. And yet, if they don't hear, if they don't see, if they don't understand, they'll yet be lost. Precious Savior, it's for us. I can't finish the message on light and darkness. Go in your Bible program and, and just do that word darkness and see how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of places that word darkness is used. And then do the same with light and see the contrast between the light and the dark. Now, I couldn't even get through 1 John today. Praise God. But precious Savior, precious Savior, we are given the light of the world. The only world this light has is the children of God. The only light there is, is the children of God. We look over that new Jerusalem and it said, won't need the sun for light for the lamb is the light thereof. Praise God. Spiritually, right here, the lamb is the light thereof. Praise God. The children of God are the light of the world. And if that light goes out, the world will be in gross darkness with no light in it. Praise God. Hallelujah. But he said, let your light so shine among men that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let that light shine, not just in life of lifestyle, but in the word of life, the preaching of life, the manifestation of truth. Let it shine. Let it shine in the midst of the darkness. You will see people come to the light. You will. We will see and harvest people. We will see and harvest. I've got to close. I've got to close. Don't want to get to rambling. Praise your Savior. Hallelujah. Let's stand together here in this congregation.